Welcome to season two of No Shelf Control, the podcast with books. <laughs> books, moves, and banter. Should I just start over? Are we going to keep that? Keep it. <laughs> <laughs> with books, uh, with books, moves, and banter hosted by authors for readers, because let's face it, we're all bookworms at heart. This season, we'll be chatting about book to screen adaptations and trending book talk books. I'm Lindsay Sparks. And I'm Lindsay Pogue. Grab a cocktail, kick back, and enjoy the show. <laughs> With Way to start it off. <laughs> You're sick, and I'm just freaking exhausted. Yeah. So there we go. Um, par- everybody, pardon my, th- 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 like, the non-existence aud- audience as we're recording live, but, like, I know, the right? people, future people listening, I am getting over the flu, which has turned into bronchitis, so I sound delightful, yeah. <laughs> but... <laughs> Well, it's not like it was going to get better in a couple days, so yeah, onward. No. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's rough. Last time Dennis got that, he had to, he's never had an uh, asthma in his life and he had to get two separate inhalers. And I was like, this is weird. <laughs> it wasn't COVID. It was just a very long. Yeah. Yeah. Long I took out. a bunch of, co- I kept like my mom, thing. my mom kept guilting me into like taking more COVID tests. She's like, I really think you should test again. I really think <laughs> you should test again. I'm like, I don't think the results are going to change. Mm-hmm. Still negative. <laughs> so <laughs> but we um, made it here at least yeah I'm excited to talk about this one I know um I yeah feel- but I mean I guess I can intro the show <laughs> oh yeah I guess there's that <laughs> so right. welcome to the second episode of the of season two. Oh my god so I told LP before this started so, and like eight tangent pre-intro um I did take cold medicine right before this <laughs> <laughs> so I could get a little loopy um, you know, but I'm not drinking. So I figured it can make up for that. There so. you go. <laughs> um, welcome to the second episode of season two of the No Shelf Control podcast. Um, we mentioned last episode that this season will be, uh, we will be alternating between discussing book to screen adaptations, um, and popular book talk books. Uh, so last episode we talked about The Witcher and The Last Wish by, I think it's Andre Sepkowski. That's what I've decided. Um, Good job. (laughs) We're going to run with it. Um, So we um, discussed those two things (laughs) and and compared them and stuff like that. Uh, And this episode, we're talking about a book that I absolutely love. um, And that is From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Very much a, like, (laughs) epic fantasy romance mashup kind of thing it's Mm -hmm. I think it's great um I hope it wasn't too epic fantasy for you no I actually um I really enjoyed it and I this is my first book that I've obviously seen her books everywhere I've Mm -hmm. heard about many of them but this is the first and I'm pretty sure I own a number of ebooks of hers that I've gotten over the years but I've never actually sat down to read one so this was the first time to actually maybe read one and I'm glad that it was this one because I really enjoyed it um so yeah it's exciting it's really exciting so um well before we get into like the book discussion what are you drinking tonight um so uh like you I am really struggling today because I'm really tired. As you know, yeah. I dealt with Blue going to the emergency yeah. vet on Monday. and She's still she's okay? Tuesday. She's doing okay. We're still taking her in. Uh, sh- I'm taking her in tomorrow morning for uh, more liver. Blue is a cat. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Sorry. Blue is a kitten. She's a 10-month-old kitten and she thinks that she's invincible and she is not. <laughs> yeah, so she's a teenager. Um, yeah. <laughs> So anyway, but she's doing better, but, um, she was up all, she was, cause she went from sleeping for, you know, a day and a half after she was sick to being up all night last night. And so, and it's so hot that it's just, anyways, I've been up since like one o'clock. I think I got like an hour nap in at some point. So I'm just like really chugging along today. Um, (laughs) but anyway, yeah. So I decided that I would just sip on some, I have some rosé mum. Getting a Yum. little fancier today, um, but I, it's like I said, it's so hot here. Like I know it's hotter than ninety degrees in a lot of places in the world, but um, you know it's pretty warm. So I was like, I need something bubbly and something cold. So nice. And what about you? You also have bubbles, maybe not. I do. Bullet, but... <laughs> I have a spindrift. <laughs> nice lime. Perfect. There's fizzy sparkling water. 
Nice. Feels, feels nice on my sore, sad throat. <laughs> Yeah, that sucks. It's not that sore anymore. It's more just gross sounding. So, you know. No, we decided it's sultry. It's sultry. That's right. <laughs> yeah. It's Very right. sultry tonight. The smelly cat voice. Yeah. Yeah. I asked my husband, I was like, how do I sound? Because I was like, how oh, am I going to have to tell LP that I can't do it? I was like, I don't know. Mm. And I was like, how do I sound? And he was like, mm, you sound pretty rough. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good old husbands. Uh, I know. And I was like, I think I'm going to push through. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. I think you're fine. I think people, I think listeners, viewers, I think they're going to understand just yeah. fine. So cool. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I hope it just doesn't, well, yeah, I'm not going to like get into a deep discussion of my illness. <laughs> <laughs> Fun. <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's so funny though. Like when I'm sick, like I love my red wine, but when I'm sick, it sounds disgusting. I understand that. So gross. So, which is probably a natural thing my body is telling me. <laughs> Don't drink yeah. wine when you're sick. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Meh. Yeah. The, the few times we listen to our bodies. Right? <laughs> I know. Um, anyway, um, are you working on anything fun right now? Anything new? Uh, anything new? Well, sort of. Um, so mostly I have been immersed in book release like pre-book release stuff um this is for um, city of ruin for the my gothic um like dystopian uh, retelling of beauty and the beast and you guys are gonna Jane love Eyre. it it's yeah so it's super exciting um so i've been kind of in the midst of that dealing with the paperback and getting the art copies ready and um dealing with uh, audiobook stuff so yeah um really what else am i doing i feel like there, there are a zillion other things but um oh I did get this let me show you I'm excited got the paperback Ooh, not even pretty. out it's not even out and I did some fun stuff this time with the interior oh and yeah I did I think I kind of showed you this one this might be a new one but I made a really cool map for this one too oh I this love is, it this is, is that different it's a, this is different than the other one you saw. Oh. This is for the ruined lands. And the one I think I showed you is for the forgotten lands. Oh, so yeah. Anyways, it was. I love your clouds with their shadows. Oh, yeah. Thank you. So anyways, so that one's ready. Um, whoops. That one's ready. And um, I got this bad boy all done up. I don't know if I showed you this. Holy yeah, the, Jesus! The forgotten lands is now officially three books in one. That is like giant. a legitimate tome. Yeah, it really is. It's a, it's like almost 900 pages. Wow. Um, yeah, but it's so cool and I'm excited. I love this cover. So I'm glad that I was able to make it into a paperback. How much um, is that? <laughs> oh, to buy yeah, like 25 or 30 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have, I have my Cat de Bois books one through three and four through six in thick books, but they're not quite that thick. I think they're 1999. Yeah. Well, my normal books, because, you know, mine are a little bit longer. So my mm -hmm. normal books are, you know, like $14 yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So anyway, but um, yeah, so I got those, which is really exciting. Um, but I did, I've been spending a lot of time and I've been really protecting my morning hours. And so the last few mornings I've been um, waking up and for two to three hours, I've been working on my outline for uh, Land of Fury, which is the third book, because I already wrote Sea of Storms, which is with my alpha reader right now. So anyway, yeah, book three, I'm already start starting on it. Do you, you know, like, I don't know if this ever happens to you, but um, like, you know, I feel like the last few books, everyone's like, oh, this is a really good one. This might be my favorite one yet. Mm -hmm. Oh, this one's a really good one. Like each book. Mm -hmm. So I keep thinking, so now, you know, like the alpha reader is reading the the next one and I'm like, what if it's not as good as the other one? <laughs> yeah. So I always like that's always in the back of my mind too. It's like, do, how do I live up to my own? I know. Can can you ma imagine being like Andy Weir or yeah, something? Like, and like, it, there, how know. do you ever live up to the Martian? I don't know. I mean, I it sounds know. like Hail Mary was pretty good, so I'm gonna yeah. read that one. <laughs> so, anyways, I've been kind of not really like worried about it, but that's been on my mind. I'm just like. Oh, Mm -hmm. especially when there's radio silence and you don't know if somebody's enjoying it and you're like oh my, oh god, my god what's going on <laughs> I know that's why I I really liked this round of betas that I just did with blood of the broken mm -hmm. which was you and Sarah Lyons Fleming and um then my assistant and then one of my friends my real life friends 
um, who's not an author, <laughs> is what I mean. <laughs> We're not real to her. <laughs> um, but um, everybody, well, except for my Jenna, my friend, <laughs> has gotten back to me. Um, and really fast and like super positive. Like I think yours was, this was my favorite oh, yeah, and installment I read really in fast, the series. Yeah. yeah, everybody read it really fast. Um, like it's very dramatic. There's a lot going on in this book. Yeah. But I was sure. like, it was, it's still so nerve wracking when you, I mean, okay, Mandy, my assistant read it like in less than 24 hours from the point that I, I think Sarah did the same thing because she was on vacation and she sent me an email. She was like, oh my gosh, I'm back. Like I'll try to get it done before Monday. Um, and that was yesterday. And then she sent me her feedback today. <laughs> oh, wow. I know. I was like, oh, she's like, I only got an hour of sleep. <laughs> wow. That's cool. So I, I don't think it was because of my book. I think she just ended up reading because she couldn't sleep, but, <laughs> but either way, that's still, awesome, I was like, that was okay. Cool. All right. I was really worried about this one. Cause there's like some stuff that happens. Yeah. So, but everybody has seemed and by everybody, I mean like the three people I've heard from so far. <laughs> no, but it's, 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 it definitely is. I really love the world building in this. I mean, I know you've been doing a lot of world building in the series in general, but I really, like, we get to go to some fun places in this yeah. book and which you already know, I'm super, I love all that kind of like creepy yeah. stuff. And I think that's like an essential element of this series though, is like the setting has to be like a cool place to discover. Yeah, I guess that's true. You know? Yeah. So. I love, I have to say this for people who don't get the beta copy. It's hilarious because in her, <laughs> in her book, this is the it says, yeah, everything has everything, like not everything, but there are a number <laughs> of things, but there's just, it's in um, parentheses because um, she hasn't come up with a name for it yet. Yeah. <laughs> and like I'm even like, characters will be like name and name. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, fungus. Okay. I still like start name. calling fungus it name. my, fungus yeah. name. Creepy black fungus. That's yeah. what it is in my head. So I know I don't yeah. even think it's black, but it's black in my head. No, it's not. Yeah. In my head, it's like, <laughs> I just picture it and I just keep going. No, it's more of a neon green. But yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, um, <clears throat> I totally like butted into your. your oh, no. No, I'm, <laughs> no, I'm done. I, I'm, yeah. No, you're fine. I'm good. I'm done. Okay. What about you? You've got. Um, yeah, I am uh, just working on one thing right now, really. So I was down, down with the flu, down with the sickness. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't heard that song in it forever. <laughs> I know. I mean, I may have heard it recently because we do play a like Y2K channel for, at dinner time. <laughs> I don't know. We like to hear the music that we listened to in I high like school. Like your kids grow up with the classics <laughs> and I am using quotations here. Yes. People. <laughs> um. I, I have no idea where my mind was going there. So I'm just going to like backtrack and get okay. on track. Um, so I um, have been getting the stuff, the like stories set up that are going to be going, there's like a bug in here, that get off there, um, that is going to be, that I'm going to be putting up in my spicy new Patreon, um, which is called Sparks, Sparks, well, it's like Sparks, Sparks and Spice, but it's Sparks plus Spice. Um and uh so there's going to be a new cereal brand new exclusive cereal to the patreon and i'm going to release an episode every month except i'm going to release two episodes in june right up front um and it's based on it's like very loosely based on the cereal that i released under a different pen name and i was just saying i'm super excited <laughs> to read it because i know well i'm assuming i don't know if i'll get to read it but it's yeah i mean i'll send i'll send it i mean like it's going up on i think wednesday is June 1st, right? So that's when I'm in a week, I'm launching this. So oh, I read the original. That's why I'm excited. I know you read the original. I think the new one is way better. It's like there's like vampires and shifters, and there's going to be like a crazy magical gothic mansion. Like it's going to be really cool. That's awesome. I'm like throwing everything in it that I possibly could want to like have in it. There's going to be like mermaids. Nice. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, but it's, it's really funny, like, so I think I originally, when I released this under the pen name, that I'm not going to tell anybody what it is, um, it, it had to be, like, 2015, I think. Yeah, so, that sounds about right. Like, eight years ago, two, or seven years ago. So I have grown a lot since then. Um, 
And I've definitely, I don't know some of the stuff I'm like, I don't know why I was like overcomplicating this stuff so much. Like I clearly didn't have like an end plan for where I was going with this. Um, but I've yeah. like going back through, I renamed a lot of characters. Um, but I have found like ways to, um, just make it like more complex and ha like have characters that are, don't just like pop in and then disappear, but that are going to like end up being everything together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you're crafting a story. I am crafting a story. So I definitely have like, I feel like my craft has grown since I originally, um, Isn't that cool that you can go back and you can compare them too. Yeah, it, it's definitely way different. Um, it's funny because I was like, <laughs> it um, was pretty similar. The opening scene was pr pretty similar to one scene in Echo in Time. There's like a bar scene in Echo in Time and the opening scene oh, yeah. <clears throat> in this, in the original um, was very similar, extremely similar. So I was like, well, clearly I would like, was influenced by that, by myself. Um, but I changed it. Like it's still at a club, but that's the only thing that's the same. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited. I was like, God, I really like this. Like I want to write this for a book. And I was like, well, like when it comes out, like when I have like a full season's right. worth, then I can always release it. Um, oh, I'll have to go back there and edit it and everything, but yeah, it's really fun. So then I still need to write, um, it's called the last vampire queen and it's, um, so like paranormal reverse harem. Um, I'm definitely like making sure it's like my level of story and history and mythology I've got like a really cool Greek Greek mythology based thing going on um but I'm sure I'll share more about that once I actually have the thing available next time to to tell people about um but I'm also writing an extended scene from Song of Scarabs and Fallen Stars with the two characters of mine who are probably my readers favorites which are Kat and Nick um so there's like a scene with them that faded to black um it's when she woke up um from having the dream of Tarset in the prison cell mm -hmm. um so that one faded to black so I'm, I'm gonna have to like get creative with them because they're <laughs> adventurous <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um and then I'm really excited about this so I finished um Echo in Time reading that for Read by the Author my other podcast and um, I was like, oh man, this would be a really cool bonus scene to write. It's kind of like a bonus epilogue, but it's Lex, Lex and Marcus, like after the feast at the end of Echo in Time, if you remember that at all. Um, there's a feast with all of the Nezurettes. I vaguely remember <clears throat> that, yeah. Yeah, like they've like survived this initial attack from Set um, and Lex has like the power. Um, spoiling my own book. Um, but uh yeah I was like this this will be like their first non-lives at risk chance to like have a romantic moment after this feast and she just like almost died and all this stuff so I'm excited to like give them some, some like non-rushed on-page romance time. Is it weird to go back and sorry I don't want to talk too long about this because this isn't what we're really talking about but <laughs> Is it weird to go back and write a love scene or get really in depth and like emotional with characters that you actually haven't written together in a very long time? Um, I don't think so. I haven't, I have not written these yet. I just have them planned out, but yes, um, I don't think it's going to be weird because I do still write Kat and I do still write Lex in. I guess I was thinking more, yeah, like Lex and, and Haru. So, but yeah. yeah. So but yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's not. And especially because I just read through. Echo in time. Oh, that's true. It's I super forgot you fresh in my head. Yeah. That makes, yeah. yeah, okay. That makes so much more. Yeah, yeah, I get that then. Yeah. I'm like, man, if I had to go back and write a love scene between two characters from seven books ago, I'm like, ooh. I mean, I could figure it but out. Also, but also, keep in be... mind that like my character, my series are like just focused yeah. on one couple for the most part. I mean, I would throw in other characters. That's true. I'm all over the place. Yeah. So I don't have <laughs> I as don't many. Have a lot of couples. <laughs> yeah. I don't have as many couples. Yeah, that's true. And I really deep dive into there. Trauma. <laughs> and they're all interwoven so that's good yeah okay yeah yeah all right neat so neat neat yeah um <clears throat> that's all I've got going on I mean that's, that's not that I'm not going to keep talking about all my stuff so um <laughs> what are you reading right now 
So I feel I'm very proud of myself because, you know, one of my goals is to really start reading more. Mm -hmm. And um, I have been. So um, I finished. You asked me last time, so I brought it. I finished To Kill a Kingdom. um, And this is a YA um, retelling of essentially The Little Mermaid. It's a little darker, a little grittier, but um, it's really beautifully written. and it's, it was fun. It was fun. So uh, if you guys are in, people are into that, you should check it out. Uh, so I finished that one. Obviously, I listened to um, From Blood and Ash. Um, I devoured this. Sorry, this I'm book. out of focus. I'm trying to fix it. God damn it. So, uh, but then I got this and don't let the cover fool you. Yes, it is a romance, historical romance, but... This is probably one of the best historical romances I've ever read because, yes, it has a sexy Viking guy on the front, but to me, this feels like I'm watching a Vikings episode versus a watered down, I don't get me wrong, I love just like Regency historical romance, all Mm -hmm. that, but this is like grit, like this is what it would really be like to be a Viking or living in a world, you know, that actually would be in the moment. I'm not saying that everything in this book is historically accurate, which the author is very clear it isn't, but it very much feels that way. I love that everything is hard. Everything is gritty. Everything, it's like you're watching The Last Kingdom on BBC and Netflix, you know. I really, really love it. Um, So I devoured that in two days and I haven't even finished the last two chapters because I didn't have book two yet, but I got it today. (laughs) So you know who's going to finish reading that tonight or tomorrow. (laughs) And does this, Um, is this another, so like, does this stick with one couple or does it switch couples? Yeah. So it's a bit essentially about a princess, uh, a Saxon princess, so an English princess who uh, kind of is treated very badly in a lot of different ways. Um, you know, traded off, uh, as Mm. most women were back then, um, for the good of the kingdom or whatever. And anyway, so there, she's passed around a lot, but it's her story and she's fucking badass in the most believable way, like in the survival aspect of it, you know, of just like having to live in this era and stuff. And, um, anyways, it's really, really great. And, uh, so there's a couple different Viking love interests, um, there's which I'm really excited to see where that goes um because it takes place over many years so um you know anyway it's I'm just I'm really excited uh to keep going and I think it's funny because this author um Monica James I don't think she's known for writing historical romance I think this might be her only series I might be wrong but she does a lot of contemporary stuff and so um I'm glad that for reading your first book of hers I'm glad that I picked this because like I said this is what I would want my romance my historical romance to be you know nice that sounds really fun yeah and then I'm still listening to the hating game audiobook um because it's 11 hours long and I had to stop so that I could listen to the whatever 16 hour whatever audiobook (laughs) from blood and ash yeah (laughs) so anyway yeah but so I'm anyway, I'm very proud of myself because, oh, and I've been beta reading nonstop since the beginning of the year. So oh, well, yeah, you I'm have been. a lot of reading and I'm very <laughs> proud of myself. I'm reading things that I want to read. So nice. I picked all pretty good books so far. So. Good. How about you? Um, I read, I wrote this down. Um, so I finished A Ruin of Roses by KF Green, which was awesome. Highly recommend. I know you had been looking for Beauty and the Beast retellings. Mm-hmm. So I highly recommend it. She... Have you read any of her books? Did you read Sin and Chocolate? Yes. Okay. She, <laughs> did, like, somehow she manages to, like, make me blush and also, like, giggle from the <laughs> hilarity at the same time in her books. I love her Magical Midlife Madness series. I know. I'm really on you. I love that series so much. I ordered the, she did a Kickstarter for a special edition of that. Um, to, or I was, like, instant, like buy that um but um yeah so rune of roses highly recommend for anybody who likes fairy tale retellings or just like she it's just like some of her stuff is so ridiculous and funny but also like it gets really like dark and gritty and like super sexy nice yeah i really like it i love all of her heroines um and also all of her heroes like yeah 
she's she's and she followed me on um tiktok that's awesome i know i was like oh You're my like, hi <laughs> yeah that's fun yeah she's the first like author who i'm a really big fan of like she's an i'll buy any book she puts out basically so um and she, that she followed me back i was like that's so cool this is so cool <laughs> Um, I'm like never gonna say anything to her, but <laughs> still like you should. I'll still mention her when I post about her. Um, but yeah. Um, and then I am listening to Flirting with Monsters by Flirting with Monsters, a series. Um, I think the first one is I don't know, I got the box set. Um <clears throat> by Eva Chase. And uh it's a reverse harem. Mm, paranormal romance urban fantasy maybe maybe more urban fantasy um but definitely um spicy um really like it I read another so I'm, I was have been doing reverse harem research um because other than um Laurel K Hamilton I had not read any other reverse harem books and those the Anita Blake vampire hunter series um which I am haven't read any of the new ones yeah um but she was writing that which is definitely reverse harem before reverse harem was a thing so um there was nothing else like that out there really at that time so anyway I read something else I'm not gonna say what it is because I didn't love it um but flirting with monsters by Eva Chase tons of depth I feel like the story is really good on outside of the sexy parts um the three current three there's another person who I'm thinking is going to be a love interest um but the current three original love interests are all very different and unique which is great um and their interactions with the main character are really different and unique um so it's definitely I'm trying to pull some inspiration from that for crafting my own man harem <laughs> <laughs> just making sure that like it's a good the, problem to have yeah the personalities are very different you want to have them being very like I guess um complimentary right you, you don't know? want them all to have the same personality it makes no sense yeah and almost like each each man <laughs> each member of the harem should like have a strength that complements the main characters and like one of her weaknesses I guess right um so that's kind of what I'm thinking of as I'm crafting this while I'm writing it <laughs> um so but I'm not adding in all the men at once so like Eva Chase introduces the love interests all at the same time very early on or at least the uh, initial initial three um but I am minor getting added in like slowly nice She's slowly acquiring her harem <laughs> um so uh yeah I highly recommend that um I did order a few others. Um, one book that I had no idea was Reverse Harem and I have been wanting to read forever, which is also by Eva Chase, I believe. And it's claimed by the gods and it's based in Norse mythology. Um, so I'm really excited about that one. The cover is super pretty. I'm sure you've seen it. I'm looking it up. What's it called? Uh, claimed by the gods. It's like very gold and um, cool, cool. it's super pretty cover. Um, so um, yeah, that's what I've got going on reading cool. wise. Yeah. Um, so we're going to dive into our discussion of From Blood and Ash. So I'm going to go ahead and read the description from the Amazon page. Um, so a maiden chosen from birth to usher in a new era, Poppy's life has never been her own. The life of the maiden is solitary, never to be touched, never to be looked upon, never to be spoken to, never to experience pleasure, waiting for the day of her ascension. She would rather be with the guards, fighting back uh, the evil that took her family than preparing to be found worthy by the gods. <laughs> Pretty cover. I'm just, I'm just entertaining people while you read. <laughs> yeah, but the choice has never been hers a duty. The entire kingdom's future rests on Poppy's shoulders, something she's not even quite sure she wants for herself. Because a maiden has a heart and a soul and a longing. And when Hawk, a golden-eyed guard, honor-bound to ensure her ascension, enters her life, 
Destiny and duty become tangled with desire and need. He incites her anger, makes her question everything she believes in, and tempts her with the forbidden. Rire. A kingdom. <laughs> it's a really long description. It really is. <laughs> Forsaken by the gods and feared by mortals. A fallen kingdom is rising once more. From blood and ash we will rise. Um, determined to take back what they believe is theirs through violence and vengeance. And as the shadow of those, and as the shadow of those cursed draws closer, the line between what is forbidden and what is right becomes blurred. Poppy is not only on the verge of losing her heart and being found unworthy by the gods, but also her life when every blood-soaked thread that holds her world together begins to unravel. Dun, dun, dun. It's a hard life being the maiden. I mean, it's kind of awful. Yeah, it really is. Like, I wasn't, I mean, it sounded sarcastic, but I was really- like, She's basically a like, I kidnapped, like, what is it? Uh, let's see, I can tell the cold medicine is kicking in because my brain's not working. Um, like Stockholm sort of yeah thing, she's no? got like yeah. Stockholm syndrome essentially yeah no it's oh gosh I don't blame her for living it up a little bit <sighs> yeah do what I you know gotta do girl I know so all those hormones blazing no I'm just kidding <laughs> how old is she supposed to be 18 I don't know um, oh God. yeah um and like they're so mean to her and like her room has nothing in it because they keep punishing her and taking her stuff away. Yeah. 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 Like, are, are they trying to get her to like, I remember when I was reading this, it's like, are they trying to get her to like act out and rebel and like ruin their little plans to use her? Oh, we're going to spoil everything about this book. FYI. Yeah. We really are. Really like are. there's lots of twists and we're going to talk so many about things them. I want to say right now, but I'm going to wait till we get to the questions. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay. First off, what format did you read? I read audiobook. Sorry. I'm going to just like, butt right in there. I read no. the audiobook narrated by Stina Nielsen, who is amazing. And she's also my narrator on song. Of, one of my narrators on song of scarabs and fallen stars, which is also amazing on. And I just, I fell in love with her performance in this series and then I like approached her. It was total moonshot. And she said, yes. Yeah, no, I think she did an amazing job as well. Um, in fact, I, I don't actually know. I've heard her a couple of times, but I haven't listened to a full audiobook. So it was, it was, I think she did a really, really good job. Her um, man voices are great. Oh yeah. She made everybody sound just a little bit different. Mm -hmm. She did a really good job. She didn't rush it. Um, her voice for Victor. Oh, I love Victor. I know. We're anyway, gonna talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yes, um, I listened to the audiobook, but I also bought the hardcover, which I am planning to revisit and reread. Um, yeah, just because I feel like now that I know yes. what's going on, I need to pay attention. I, yes. Well, not need to. I was paying attention, but I want to reread it and yeah. grasp it for what the story really is now. Yeah. Um, and pay like get all those nuances and stuff and like yeah. Understand. Well, and like I so feel I like there again. were a lot of clues. I, I feel like a lot of Hawk's reactions and interactions with Poppy before the reveal, like, even though I think pretty much everybody knew what was going on there, like, before the reveal, um, I still feel like there's a lot of early interactions with him that she had, that because Poppy didn't know what was going on, I feel like we as the reader can, like, look back and, like, pick up extra stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do we want to talk about that question or do we want to wait? Cause I have a, like something to say. About okay. That. I feel like it's going to come up like with everything that we talk about. So, um, <laughs> the big spoiler, everybody turn it off right now. If you do not want the big spoiler, if you like have been on the internet or exist in like book talk, I'm sure you've already been spoiled on this, but Hawk is Castile Denier the dark one, like, who Poppy is, like, terrified of, but, and yeah. Hawk is, like, protecting her, and she doesn't realize that he is Kestiel, and he's just stealing her from her terrible life, like, oh, man. <laughs> um, but he is, I mean, for his gain, I mean, that's, yeah, he's yeah. planning on using her yeah. for nefarious purposes until he falls in love with her, but, right, yeah, so, uh, hearing all of the big reveal stuff about this, so, 
I, I mean, maybe that had something to do with me knowing that was him, but I honestly think it's just from writing so many stories and understanding character arcs and what I do in my own, for my own plot twists and everything. I totally, I mean, I knew from the first time I met him because yeah. I don't know, I just, there's all these little things from him not being around every single time something bad happens yeah. to him having this like air of importance to himself that he can get away with anything and it doesn't matter like talking back to the duke and the duchess and the priestess and like whatever you know so i just feel like he moved through the rank so quickly there were just so yeah. many things um he just always knew where she was and just all these things so mm -hmm. there were so many for me it was like i knew I, it still it didn't change the way i love the story because i was like oh my god like i was trying like i wanted to pay attention more yeah. to like how he was doing things and you know like watch him fall in love with her as yeah. in my mind i knew that he was supposed to be obviously trying to do something to kidnap yeah. her or win her over to like his inner security. struggle his inner struggle was so palpable like i yeah. could feel how torn he was yeah that's I funny. That was okay really good. so yes i think the thing that i really want to pay attention to when i go back and reread it because i am now waiting for her to finish the series before i go back um the thing that I really want to pay attention to in this book in particular is the fact that Castile Hawk knows that it's Poppy in that opening scene. Yes, which is, I think, he, great. And he knows that it's scenes. her the whole time. And I'm sure that he's made like references to it or like, and she's like, really wants to make sure that he doesn't figure it out so she's not gonna like speak or like all this stuff and he just knows that it's her yes what a great way to op open a book by the way I like know. that was really really smart <laughs> in um, a house of ill repute <laughs> oh my god i'm like yeah the maiden <laughs> untouched and unseen by everybody well quote unquote everybody is you know like her first her first her first chapter she's getting like seduced in a dark corner <laughs> by uh, a really hot guard that everyone wants to bone and I think it like just it was a really smart way to open the book because it, really was. it was like really exciting but it also showed Poppy's true character mm -hmm. beneath her her like rebellious agreed like desire to like live versus her then for a long time we see her as like the obedient maiden after mm -hmm. that well, because so. the whole time she keeps being every every time somebody says anything, she's like, oh, "Is it because they know what I did?" Like the whole mm -hmm. time she's worried that you know somebody found out what she was doing. Mm -hmm. Hawk told on her, you know, once he finds out, quote unquote, who she was. Yeah. The whole time. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. So yeah. that was one of the things that there was a few things that um, I put that I really liked about as far as my favorite scenes, and that was one of them. I thought it was a really good way to open our oh, for the opening scene yeah to to open up the book but also to get to know her and hawk and really pit their relationship like that's it's going to be something stemming from that yeah. whole book which is really great yeah it's a good teaser uh, yeah and i also love that like we we met kieran in that oh yeah we did and then yeah. i also love the whole like whole her seeing victor and like oh shit like my freaking dad yeah, not really her dad but like he's here i have to like hide or whatever yeah. you know <laughs> That was great too. It was good. It was really good. Um, okay. So we both did the audiobook and we both have the hardcover. <laughs> yes. Um, since we're both like building up our hardcover collections. <laughs> Actually, the only hardcover I've bought recently. Yeah. Bought. I don't think bought's a bought. word. Bought. I don't think bought's a word. But it sounds <laughs> like something they would say in clueless. I just bought. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so what were your favorite things about this book? Um, I know you had a couple things you wanted to talk about. Um, so as I mentioned before, this is my first book by her, which so I, I really enjoyed it. Um, there were a couple parts for me that I felt like they were kind of drawn out. So, and I don't know, um, I, it, it didn't change the story yeah. or anything, but I just, there were a couple parts where I was like, okay, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, you stabbed him and you feel bad and he's fine with it. So let's move on. Your, you know, I feel like, like that. that's what a, a lot of people, a lot of people's big complaint main complaint about oh, really? the series is just that she can be a little bit wordy yeah but I'm like but, I still ate it up <laughs> yeah I know it's it's still good um but I think um I we we're kind of talking about this the character development she does such a good job um Poppy is like this really obviously none of us are the maiden chosen nothing right <laughs> we have no powers or gifts but um there there's something very relatable you know, and so I think that she did a really good job of making her a likable, strong, um, but realistic character because yeah, she's gonna want to act out 
against yeah. every single thing that she's had to do her entire life. She's been in quote unquote chains, you know? So yeah. it's like, it makes sense that she would be all over the place and any person other than Victor who shows her any sort of affection or care or interest, like, yeah, she would eat that up. She would want to know what else is out there, you know? So anyways, I just, I really, I really like that about that. Um, and not even just her character though. I mean, you think about Victor, absolutely loved him as a character, the Duchess, the Duke, Lord, all of them. I wanted, I hated them. She did a very good job. The priestess, is that, that's what they called her, right? The priestess. Yeah. Anyway, I'm like, she did such a good job making you love to hate those characters. Yeah. So anyway, I think she just did really good with her character development. So I, I agree. Really that. I loved, um, yeah, like I agree. I think Poppy was a great character. Uh, her, the fact that she remained unbroken after everything that they put her through, like that she still did her tiny rebellions, like mm -hmm. even though she was like abused <laughs> constantly yeah. and like, not just like, not just physically abused, but just like belittled and like emotionally abused, yeah. like yeah, cut off from people. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, yeah, sure. I thought that she was definitely a super interesting character. I love. I mean, Hawk slash Castile is like my ideal, <laughs> morally gray. Like he's doing a bad thing, does lots of bad things, but he's doing them for there's like a noble purpose. Mm -hmm. um yeah I loved him um I think he's hilarious the way he's like you're uh I don't I don't know exactly I can't remember exactly what he says but he's like you're such a like murderous <laughs> or I don't know he well, like she, is. she stabs him so many times and he's like I'm so turned on right now I know well and it's funny because it but that's the cool thing that I like about her too it's like <laughs> all those people did all those horrible things to her and then I think it's the last chapter or the second to last chapter I can't remember when she's walking into the dinner hall with him and then there are the the guys who attacked her who are supposed to be like working for him and supposed to be loyal to him they're all nailed on the wall it's like mm -hmm. she kind of gets off on that and it's like yeah a part of me yeah she would be I can see being like really horrified, but another part be really gratified too. It's like they did really horrible things and they were going to kill me. And yeah. I wouldn't want them to just walk away either. You know, I mean, what I want to see them nailed on the wall probably <laughs> would lose my lunch. But the <laughs> point is, it's like, I like that Jennifer wasn't um, like, a, she didn't shy away from anything in this mm -hmm. book. Like she just kind of went with it. I mean, even the amazing, like my, some of my favorite scenes are the most gory, epics yes like I've ever read yes so yeah like she didn't yeah. shy away from anything yeah okay cool um I also loved all the steamy scenes obviously because I'm mm -hmm. me um and I really I okay it took me an embarrassingly long time to catch on to this but the fact that this was vampires and werewolves oh I didn't know that for the that to me <laughs> that should have been the big reveal because I, I didn't get it either <laughs> I was like, what? Oh my God. I love vampires. Like I love everything vampires. Like I'm, I'm, I'm my next thing is vampires that I'm writing. Um, I'm just, just yeah. I thought there's something wrong with me too. I'm glad you said that. Cause I was like, <laughs> wow, did I like miss the boat on this? That's one of the things I was going to ask you about world building. I'm like, did I totally not? No, get I think it, it was like, shoot, I, I mean, it was really smart. Cause I think a lot of people are like, oh, it's just another vampire book, you know, like, no, I guess nowadays it's kind of like it's just another Fae book. There's not any Fae in here, I don't think, that I can... That we, well, that we know of yet. No, there's vampires, there's the werewolves, there's the... Or wolven. Wolven, uh, They don't yeah. call them vampires. And, yeah. You know, and then there's like the divine people, and then there's actual gods later. But, um, yeah. And, I, yeah, and like what the Ascended do and all that, like that to me was way more mind-boggling than... I mean, I knew they weren't like good, but yeah. I didn't actually know it was, I didn't, I knew something wonky was up with her brother. I didn't know what, yeah. I almost thought for a minute that he was somehow related to the dark one, but at the same time, that didn't really make sense. But so I knew there was something going on with him, um, because he yeah. just kind of disappeared, you know, he stopped talking to her and like really, really talking to her about what was really going on and all this stuff. And she hadn't seen him. And anyway, I don't know. I feel like all that, like totally, I didn't see a lot of it coming. Yeah. Maybe it's because I was so focused on, on Hawk too. Cause I, so I was just like, <laughs> so I was just I. eating up everything. <laughs> I was, yeah. Yeah. I was totally um, into him. Maybe totally. that's what it is. Yeah. Um, I do have a question though about the world. So, um, they keep saying Macedonia, right? Was where uh -huh. it takes place, which is ancient Greece slash yeah. 
an ancient world, but it's, it's actually a historical place. So this is, that was very kind of interesting to me that she, I know that kept throwing me off. Cause I was like, wait, is this like a historical fantasy, but I don't feel like it is. It was yeah. more just, and then there's, um, Pompeii, but it's spelled different. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyways, I, I, that was something that kind of struck me too. I was just like, wait, that, so it was a little, conf- I had to go look it up. Cause I'm like, that's what it's called. Like I'm not mistaking history. Like, so I went back and I was like, okay, yeah. So yeah. she's, so she's putting it in an actual time and place in history, but it's obviously a hundred percent fantasy fantasy. Cause they have, yeah. you know, gifts and um, yeah. The world is ruled by these yeah. immortal ish people. So, yeah. So anyway, okay. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. I totally forgot about that because I did read this a couple months ago. Um, and then I refreshed myself. Um, okay, so let's move on to favorite scenes. Yeah. So I my question that I wrote that I sent you was, do you have a favorite scene? But I wrote down four different ones. So I have three. So <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Uh since I have four, do you want me to go first? And sure. then we'll just like alternate. I'm sure I, we might have a couple of the same. I bet so. Okay. So I really loved the um under the willow tree scene. Like the first is that's the garden, right? Yeah. After in, the yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So yeah, yeah. Like they're wearing the masks and um right before the sadness part. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, right before the sadness part. <laughs> yeah, I wrote down chapter 24, 25. So like they go under the willow tree and they totally like make out and it's like Poppy's first besides the the brothel thing at, in the opening right. scene. It's like really her first real like and he knows who she is, so it's yeah, well, or obviously he already did, but you know, yeah. 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 But yeah. It, it I I think I the thing I love about it, so like Castiel Hawk at this point is like this, it's very like roguish um and he like gives off an air of being very like worldly and experienced and you don't expect him to be so respectful of her but like he doesn't really make any like he waits for her to ask him to kiss her and like yes he does like kind of set up the scenario but he doesn't do it I mean he was very roguish and very forward in the opening scene but later when when it's I don't know. He just was, uh, I really liked how respectful he was of her Yeah. throughout. And there's another one. It's like the same thing. It, another of my favorites. Um, yeah. yeah. But overall, it's just like a very visually beautiful scene also with like imagining the weeping willow around them. Isn't that interesting too, because isn't that where I might be wrong? Um, but isn't that where her first rate, no rate, what was his name? What was the first, not Raiden, um, it was her first uh, guard and he died. Was it in oh, the gardens, right? It was in the gardens. I don't know if it was under that tree. That but part, that was, I forgot about that part. Okay. That was sad too. That was, the, I have another question that was, did any part of this book make you cry? I'm pretty sure that that part made me cry. Oh yeah? We be- like barely yeah, knew yeah. him. Yeah. For some no, reason, was... I remember I was like cooking and I was just like stopped chopping something. I was like, What? Yeah. And I remember thinking like, I, I felt so bad for, cause everyone was just like forgetting about him. And like two seconds after it happened, yeah. she was like, no, like somebody died to save my life. You yeah. Know? And, um, and that was when she spoke back to, um, the Duke. Right. And she like corrected so. him on the guard's name. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 So anyway, um, so that, yeah, that was a really good scene. Um, I already said, I liked the very first scene within like the body house or whatever you want to call it um Mm -hmm. and then this just tells you how sick I am my two other favorite scenes there's some uh, some fun ones I like them when they were you know I have a feeling you're about chasing through (laughs) chasing through the snow you know and then it got all hot and bothered and she stabbed them and all that love that too (laughs) but it was like feeding on her neck um but (laughs) I fucking loved seeing the duke strung up with a oh yes body yeah that was very satisfying i loved that i was so i think i would even text you and i was just like oh my god yes this is the most satisfying scene i've ever read that dude that guy was such a douche and then (laughs) the um lord what's his name lord mazine Uh, mazine yeah he her chopping it oh i know the arm i loved it (laughs) so i I loved those scenes because it was so gratifying (laughs) poppy tears lord razine apart she's like 
<laughs> chops off his arm. Oh, I love it. I know. absolutely love it. But I mean, it was very deserved. Oh, hundred percent. It was yeah, hundred. That's what I'm yes. saying. Like, it's like the author. She did a great job of really making you hate these people, so that these scenes could be so satisfying. And again, yeah. she didn't shy away from making it gory and gross because I, when I was, I was so satisfied. Like, just oh, anyways, I loved it. I loved it. I'm like, make him bleed. Yeah. Anyway, um, that's all I have for them. So okay, anyway. so I have two more, and they're like. One of them is romancy and one of them is just like, <laughs> I love him so much. Um, so chapter 30, <laughs> when they're like at camp, this is after he's stolen her away. Mm -hmm. um, and, and he's still oh. hawk at this point. And he's like, I know. And she's like, I can't sleep. And he's like, I know a way to help you relax. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, you What do. a nice guy. <laughs> what a guy going out of I his know. way. I know, but I remember I was like, oh, I'm so excited. I know yeah. where this is going. <laughs> and was it kill who was it that was just standing there? It was killer the whole time. Kier, or Kier, Kieran. Kieran, sorry, my <laughs> character that I'm writing is <laughs> killing. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> yeah. Kieran. I love it. Yeah. Kieran is great. I love Kieran. <clears throat> um Bob's and then chapter 38. I love this is another um of Castile slash hawk. Like he's like, this is in the moment between when she realizes and he shifts from Hawk to Castile in her mind. But he says, I am not a good man, but I am, because she's like around. Is, she the, is this when she's in the cell? I think she's in the barn or something. Oh, I, can't I can't remember where she is. Again, I read it a couple months ago, but I did write down the dialogue as it was. Um, it's when she makes the connection of who he is. Um, so maybe she's, an, I don't know. But he says, I'm not a good man but I'm trying to be right now because she's like aroused by the violence again because <laughs> that's who they are. <laughs> so she's that's like- a hard life, yeah. He's like, stop it, stop it. Um, and she says, I don't want you to be good. But then she figures out who, she, who he is and she stabs him in the heart. <laughs> is this after, I'm trying to remember, I think that- This he, is when she fed on- he tried to save her with his blood, right? So yeah. she's yeah. all like delirious, yeah. like, like lustful. Yeah. yeah. yeah so she wants to jump his bones. And he's like, and he's like, I'm trying to be power. honorable, you know? Yeah. <laughs> she's that. like, I don't want you to be. What a guy. And she stabs him. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's funny. I mean, I feel like there were a lot of scenes that I loved. Those are the ones that stood out to me when I was looking yeah. back through the book. I know it's really hard. It's like I see all these people on book talk and they actually have like a gazillion color coded things on their book. I, I know. need to start doing that because I know I, my memory. And that's one thing I've noticed. Um, you know, we were talking last episode about, you know, because I was reading The Last Wish, the The Witcher, um, the first book, and I couldn't retain anything because I was mm -hmm. just hearing it. Like I couldn't see or write or like see how something spelt. So in my mm -hmm. head, it's just like I can I visualize it and then it's gone, you know? Yeah. So I think it's really important for me as a reader moving forward. Like I'm starting to realize that, especially when I talk about a book, I need to have something that I can actually physically look at so that it's more real and I can like see it written down, you know? And yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's a dyslexia thing. Maybe that's just the way my brain works, but I think it's actually really helpful. I like to be able to see the names, how the names yeah. are spelled, because I, even when I hear them, I still like visualize the spelling of them. And yeah, so like, it could sense. be two names that sound the same, but I still like in my brain process them as different mm -hmm. if they're spelled differently. And then it can be very disorienting for me when I find out a name is not spelled the way that I thought it was yeah. like Victor. Yeah. <laughs> that one threw me off. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay. I feel like I want to jump right. I'm going to hop questions to did any part of the book make you cry? Because I feel like this relates to what we were just talking about. Okay. Um, so I already said that the, when the guard was mm -hmm. killed near the beginning, that made, that did, I, that did make me cry. Um, uh, unexpectedly, because like I said, like we barely knew the guy, but it was somebody who was kind to Poppy and very few people were. Yeah. I think that was, and so you like really felt her loss of this like one person. It was like that, that guard and Victor and Tawny were all that she had. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, I don't think anything made me cry. I do 
I did really like that scene. I mean, in that I appreciate it and it was very touching. Um, I wasn't, obviously didn't want him to die, but, um, and then though, everything with Victor too, I, I didn't, I don't think I got teary eyed, but I do remember I was sitting here and I was working on something. And I remember after, I don't know how many minutes I was just like staring. I don't know how long I was just staring at my computer screen. Cause I was listening to, I was just like immersed. So yeah um definitely that was a that was a touching scene too and yeah I mean I think I, I had who's ever lo- really looked after her yeah so. I think I had just gotten out of the shower because and when I think of that scene I can see my bathroom <laughs> I have a very like location tag for when I'm listening to audiobooks it's weird yeah. no it makes sense <laughs> but, yeah. yeah yeah so and like the him saying like forgive me I failed you and then that repeating in her head yeah as she's chopping up Lord Mazine. I do like that for as cruel as Jennifer is when she's writing like the bad guys getting their, you know, what their comeuppance or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, she really gave them time to say goodbye. Like I, she did get, like, she was able, if I'm remembering correctly, Poppy was able to, to tell him like, you know, I forgive you. They're like, it's fine. You know? Yeah. There's nothing and to I forgive like or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, something like that. So I'm glad that she did that. That was yeah. really satisfying. Yeah. He didn't just die. Like, it wasn't just like this death and then he was gone. And then it's like everybody, I hate those scenes when everyone just is left saying the like most horrible thing and then everyone's yeah. dead. And then, you know, it's like yeah. everyone just full with regret the whole time. Yeah, that is hard. Yeah. Um. Okay, so do you, did you feel like you thought of Hawk and Castile differently? Or did you feel like you viewed them as the same? I mean, obviously they're the same character, but right, in right. Poppy's, we, this is a first person book, which I love. That's my thing. Um, and so we're experiencing the story through Poppy's eyes. And so I feel yeah. like she views Hawk and Castile as two very different people. And it really takes her a while to mesh the two back into the same person in her head. Um, yeah. So as the reader, we get that same perspective. So that that being said, did you have a preference for Hawk, the Hawk persona or the Castile persona? Um, I think they liked, I mean, they're both great. I think I liked the Cass uh, persona more just because he was liberated. So he yes. could be his real self. Mm-hmm. He could be dark and he could be like unforgiving and he could be his vampire self and he could be like... <laughs> He didn't have to like hide behind any pretenses, even though he didn't do a great job of it <laughs> before, <laughs> but it's like, he was just totally, could have just kind of like, you know, like just raw and like dark and just everything that quote unquote, the dark one you would think would kind of yeah. be like, you know? So I, I guess I'd have to say, um, it was really fun to see him as his truth and his true self, you know? Yeah. So. He, I feel like that as Castile, he was able to like fully embrace his morally grayness. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas I did enjoy the mystery of Hawk, mm-hmm. the, the apparent mystery of Hawk. Yeah. And that there was like the, is he, when is she going to figure it out? There was like that whole element. Yeah. Well, and you have the whole, I mean, even if you, even if you're one of the people mm-hmm. who guessed who he was, you still don't, actually know all of his reasons so there's still a huge mystery to him right mm-hmm. it's like why is he doing this does he even care about her like yeah how old is he really because he puts a lot of there's a lot of hints that he's much older than he looks so like how old mm-hmm. is he like what kind of uh, entity or being like what is the true story behind him like there's still so much mystery that we mm-hmm. we didn't really get until the very end so yeah yeah yeah, so, yeah. And, and a lot of his background is delved into further up because obviously in the next book we it's only Castiel like there's no more hawk persona right um so we get a lot more of his background yeah question um and this is if nothing else this is what why I want to keep reading because I don't feel like we got any answers about who the hell is she like who is she and what is what how why is she special like there's so many things with her that are so unanswered still so I think for me that's I mean I you and I have talked before about how it's like once the once the sexual tension is kind of gone just because the two 
you know, the guy and the girl or the main, whatever, like the two love interests, they are finally together. And it's like, okay, well, it's not quite as yeah. sexually tense anymore. So it's not quite as Lose fun interest. reading. Yeah. yeah. It's like, for me, it's not even about them anymore. It's about, I want to know what the her, hell her yeah. story is. Yeah. She is. She doesn't even know. Yeah. She is definitely the central figure in the story and the events that are happening definitely resolve, revolve around her. Like she is very much the protagonist and yeah. the chosen one or whatever, like the, yeah, not, not for being the maiden, but for, for something else. Right. Um, and I want to know what does he, he's got to know more about her. And part of me thinks that there's something, there's more that, cause I feel like she's kind of asked him and he doesn't really, he hasn't said that much. So it just makes me wonder if he's being honest or what, I don't know. I don't know. If I'm remembering it correctly, I feel like he does know some, but he doesn't know definitely doesn't know everything. Nobody, yeah. nobody really does. Like everybody's kind of shocked at the like big reveal that happens. I, I want to say it's at the end of book two, but it might be at the beginning of book three. Oh, but you, yeah, I think you it's have, at the end of book two, but you haven't read it. I've read, I started book three, but then, oh, you have read book. Three. I did start. Oh, okay. I have read book two. I started book three, but then I stopped because book four wasn't out yet. It's out now. The war of two Queens. Um, and I know she said it's gonna be a five or six book series. So I was like, okay, well, I have a lot of other books on my TBR list and I'll just wait um, until the series. Is, and, then, and then there's a, a spinoff series that actually intertwines, um, which is the, it's a companion series and you're supposed to read them. There's like an order you're supposed to read them in that it oh. makes the most sense. Um, because apparently what happens after book three, then you hop to the other series and you get like, it's like a, I don't know how to explain it because I haven't read it yet, but, um, okay. um, okay. So we really just have so, two more, two more questions. Yeah. Um, so the first one, I, I don't have answers for all of, for the, this, I have some answers, but not for the main characters. Okay. So I'm just curious, did you picture anybody, um, or do you think you have like a perfect casting for the main characters? If this, I think it is being made into, maybe, I don't know. It seems like something that would um, be made into a show. Yeah, yeah, I feel like they're all being made into something. <laughs> um, I mean, that would be exciting. I'm excited. I know, um, I would totally okay. watch it. <laughs> so I feel like there were a few people um, for Hawk. Uh, nobody like... Honestly, the first person that came to mind was Damien from Vampire Diaries. So other than that, no, I can't think of anybody. Oh, I love him. Um, Poppy, I thought uh, Eleanor Tomlinson was kind of a good pick. Um, she plays Demelza in the um, Pulled Oh, show. yes. Beauty. She's like so scrappy and like- she's Oh, like, I like, love like, her and she's so yeah. pretty. Yeah, she is. But, like she has interesting. the red hair and yeah. So anyway, um, I feel like she could be good, um, but the, honestly, okay, the person that, I have one for Victor too, but the person who I saw, like, I think is perfection is for the Duchess, the creepy Duchess. Oh, yeah. And it, and that's Nicole Kidman. Oh, that is perfect. That is totally perfect. <laughs> I thought it would be, totally I perfect. Be a good one. Yeah, I really like that. Yeah. I only no, have. No, it's Nicole, Nicole Kidman. I mean, she's not creepy, but she could play a really good No, but she guy. could play a creepy, Yeah. yeah um a creepy vampire <laughs> um mm -hmm. I have I only have someone for Victor and for Lord Mazine okay so for Victor I have um Jamie Lannister <laughs> how do you say his name Nicola Nicolaj yeah Nicola yeah he has like three names yeah yeah, yeah I can see that I, <laughs> I really like that. I really like him for that role um and then for Lord Mazine I have Tobias Menzies <laughs> He's um Frank. He's so yes. <laughs> slash right? Yeah, Frank. What's the, what's his Frank other Randall name? or uh Randall. No. Randall is the husband. No, Frank oh. is the husband. Frank Randall. Randall is the isn't Frank Randall the husband? Claire's husband. Yeah. Yeah, and then wait, what's his counter? We're Out, talking about anyway, Outlander. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, then oh, yeah, um, sorry, everybody. We're talking about Outlander. Black Jack Randall. God, he's a good. Yeah. Yeah. He, I was like, okay, he's. Um, 
Another person I was thinking of for Victor, and I don't know if you'll know who he is. You have to look him up. But he came to mind for him. Um, his name is Vincent Reagan or Regan. I'm not sure how you say his last name, but he's always plays like the kind of like the defender, like the supporting lead role defender. He was in Troy, Snow White and the Huntsman, 300, Clash of the Titans, Black mm. Sails, Vikings, Thor. Like he's he's mm. in these movies where he's plays like kind of like the sidekick, but he's always a strong, like he's the the one. That What's his name? Him. His name is Vincent uh, Reagan, R-E-G-A-N. Um, I thought he would be good. I remember him very clearly from Troy and, um, oh yeah, he's the one I recognize that I really him. Picture. Yeah, I could see that. Or maybe like Ray Stevenson. I don't know. I feel like I've picked him for something else before too, but he could be kind of cool. Like he, he, I feel like he could be like a big, like, yes, like bodyguard. Yes. I do. Guy. I do feel like this guy fits very much. I mean, obviously Nicola, Nicola, Nikolai, um, Jamie mm-hmm. Lannister is younger, but I still felt like he had that kind of yeah like i can see grizzled well uh he lost his hand in game of thrones so (laughs) i mean clearly he can went with the scrap with a bear right so (laughs) was that how it worked i don't remember i can't remember i think it was cut off wasn't it was it but he was fighting a bear i don't know there was something with a bear i i don't know he was when he was with um Brian. Yeah, yeah. That's when they got all close and became besties and know, changed their lives that. forever. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So that was all I had. Did you have any others? No. I, I feel like we've. Yeah. Okay. But um, I we neither one of us said anything for the Duke, right? Because you or no, no. Yeah. You. No, said that was Lord Mazine. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know, but yeah. yeah, I feel like I feel like we got a pretty good cast going. Yeah. I'm actually surprised for the dark one you didn't pick the darkling. <laughs> ben Barnes. <Yeah. laughs> I thought I thought about it. I know how much I, you love I him. I picture him. I do love the darkling a lot. Um I picture Castiel as having darker skin, I think. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, more of like a Mediterranean complexion. The darkling. I mean, is it makes sense technically <laughs> if it's in Macedonia, I guess. Yeah. Yeah olive skin or something yeah so um yeah I didn't I couldn't maybe I've just seen too much fan art for him that he like is his own person at this point in my head <laughs> fun huh yeah but your question is great all the time I know I love you it ask it I know um yeah so um will you continue with the series I feel like I already know the answer to this yes, yes. <laughs> yes. but I think I'm gonna do what you suggested I think I'm gonna wait and I'm gonna reread the the hardcover when all the, the books are out because I also have so many books I want to read and I don't want to get frustrated at book three or whatever and then yeah and definitely read the other series with it whatever look up whatever yeah, the look, recommended yeah. like reading order yeah. is yeah yeah so um that was a good pick it was a good book talk pick yeah. Um, so let's just say this. So maybe we need to, we're just thinking on the fly here. <laughs> um, maybe we should do like some sort of a, for these books, we should do like some sort of a rating, not for the book itself, but maybe for the hype on book talk. Like, like how, how much did hype? it like, yeah. How like much did it, did it live up to? The... Yeah. I felt I like, know. I felt like it fully, I had really high expectations for this book when I first read it. And it is a book that I read because of book talk. Um, and I, same thing with like Crescent City, where I was really nervous to read it because it was, Hype. yeah, and I loved it. Um, my only complaint about Crescent City is that it's written in third person, and third person is not my preference yeah. at all. Like, it's hard. I talked about this with The Last Wish, like, it's really hard for me to connect with the characters, yeah. but it's a super close third person. Um, so I think that made it doable for me. Um, so then if we're doing five stars that it lived up to the hype on book talk, then we're giving this one five stars. I would give this five stars. I absolutely love it. Yeah. Compared to the other book, I don't know if we want to name the book talk book that we read that we could not handle that it was, has all the hype. Oh, that was like a one. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh. I mean, I, I can, feel, I still feel like I, do, I am like, I mean, I feel like we should say what it is at this point, right? No, I no, don't want okay. to. Okay. I don't want to, I, yeah, I don't want to. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. So if we're going to be comparing it, then 
I think we should. Yeah. So definitely yeah. five. With that five. other one, I felt like I was just like, I was like, am I dumb? Like, <laughs> what am I missing that I am not understanding? Yeah. Anyway, well, this one, I feel like I'm not dumb. <laughs> No. <laughs> we got this one even I got this one and this is somebody who has a hard time wrap their head around fantasy but she also writes it in a very YA way that makes it it's not yeah. high fantasy it's not like there's not so many terms I've never heard of them in fact it almost just sounded like more English and like old school like European you know what I mean like it didn't yeah. feel like it was some made-up fairy you know terminology or something <laughs> I don't know uh, but anyway yeah um cool okay so that was a good one our, our first good pick for book talk book thank you for listening everyone um don't forget to check out the show notes for this episode's links and book recommendation i think that's all that's in there is book recommendations this <laughs> this episode um but we will we will be back in a couple weeks to chat about our next book to screen adaptation i'm pretty excited about this one um the shining girls which is on apple tv uh, and the book, The Shining Girls by Lauren Bukes, I want to say. Um, <laughs> if you're enjoying the show, we would love it if you left us a rating and or a review on iTunes. And don't forget to join the No Shelf Control Facebook group, which is also linked to in the show notes. So there is a link <laughs> linked to in the show notes. Um, and until next time, happy reading, everybody. Happy reading, adventures.